like we have a good number of attendees logged in. So I'd like to welcome everybody this evening. My name's Jen Robinson. I'm one of the assistant deans of admission at Providence College. So I'm also a proud Providence College alum. I graduated in 2013, um, but I am now on the team of people who select students for the honors program at PC and let me tell you, it is not an easy job whatsoever, especially this year. We had more applications this year than we have had in the past five years. So it made our selection process for admissions that much more difficult, um, but certainly for the honors program, um, even a step above. So congratulations to all of you. Um, I am not going to do much of the talking this evening because you have heard from the Office of Admissions a lot, but we have some awesome alumni here to share their experiences well at Providence College as members of the honors program, but as members of the Fryer family in general. Um, and please certainly use that chat function or the question and answer function at any point in time when you have questions for our alumni. Um, with all of that said, I'm gonna pass it over to Michael to get us started. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you students for considering Providence College. I graduated from Providence College in 1977 uh, from the Lawrence Honors Program and received my MBA from Providence College in 1983. Currently, I'm the CEO of a manufacturing company. I am the president of my own consulting company that I started in 2002. I'm a member of the Rhode Island Governor's Manufacturing Advisory Council. I am chair of the Rhode Island Textile Innovation Network and chair of the advisory board for the Catholic Foundation of Rhode Island. Now, I'm not giving you that list to impress you with my resume. I'm actually setting up a question. How does an English major from a family with limited means and $40,000 worth of college debt and a first job out of college as a shipping clerk at a warehouse forge a successful business career and a happy life? Well, I credit the liberal arts honors program at Providence College because it taught me how to do three things. It taught me how to think, it taught me how to write, and it taught me how to speak. So first, how did the program teach me how to think? Well, in this program, you don't merely go to one class and learn only about that subject in a vacuum, then go to another class and learn only about that subject in a vacuum. You experience how these various subjects, history, science, philosophy, art, music, are connected from a historical and cultural standpoint. This was critical to my career because I learned to recognize how ideas, skills, and processes are portable across disciplines, across marketplaces, and of course, across borders. So this unique type of learning experience taught me how to make connections, connections between types of information, connections between ways of doing things. So one of the hallmarks of my business experience has been the ability to recognize how things are done in one market or one part of the world and apply that knowledge to markets or organizations in another part of the world or even in unrelated fields. That is a thinking skill and it comes directly from my experience in the liberal arts honors program. The program also taught me to write. How? by forcing me to write. Now, during my career, I've written an award-winning book on US manufacturing, and I've written numerous articles for local, national, and international uh, publications on a wide variety of topics. My ability to organize my thoughts, to develop a convincing argument, and write it well, began in the Liberal Arts Honors Program when I had to turn in weekly 500-word essays. So every single week of the school year, I had to put forward a compelling position based on that week's reading and make a convincing argument for it. So it was my composition, compos I call my compositional boot camp. And it's not coincidental that my business career took off after I began writing 500 word articles for trade publications. And I learned how to do that in the liberal arts honors program. The third thing the program taught me is public speaking. 
Now that happens naturally every day when you sit in a classroom with smart people like my classmates and you have to defend your ideas. It helps you to learn how to speak publicly. And you also learn public speaking skills when you are a bad poet, and I certainly was, and you're asked to read your notably mediocre work several times in front of your fellow classmates and your professors. Because believe me, when your material is as bad as mine was, you better have good technique. Now, all of us have a fear of speaking in public to some degree. Uh, but during my career, I made presentations in Europe, in Asia, and throughout the US. I've spoken to thousands of people in arenas and hundreds of small groups in hotel meeting rooms. I've testified before a subcommittee, Senate subcommittee in Washington, DC. And when I get the jitters before I speak, I think back to my time in the liberal arts honors program and the pressure of sitting in front of three PhDs for a 50 minute oral exam that would determine my grade for the entire semester. So if I'm gonna speak publicly and I get a little nervous, I just think about the pressure of that. And I say to myself, Michael, you got this. So students, no matter your choice of school, and I urge you to make it Providence College, please keep in mind that having a specialized skill, deep knowledge of one particular field is important. But if you pair any specialized skill with the ability to think creatively write well and speak publicly, I guarantee you that you will be successful. You know, life after college is nothing like a lecture hall. And a lecture hall is what you get at most colleges. Success in most real world environments, but particularly in the business world, requires active participation, shared learning, effective communication, and team coordination. I learned all of those skills 48 years ago, sitting around the Woodrow Wilson table, the same table that you're gonna be sitting around next year. You know, when I was attending Providence College in the 70s, I was the only student from Kentucky. Knowing no one on campus, my classmates in the liberal arts honors program became my family. We shared our struggles, we shared successes, and even some failures. But right out of the gate, I knew I had a family. And in spite of all the changes since 1977, whenever I go back to campus, it still feels like home. And I hope you make it your home too. Good luck. Thank you. I'll pass it on to Laura now or Courtney. I will go next. Thank you, Michael. Um, I completely agree. We are family here. Go Friars forever. Um, I always, always would yell, go Friars on campus. and. Still, when I'm visiting, I'm like, go Friars. <laughs> so definitely love to uh, just love to be there and be on campus and even just feel connected to the Friar family as a whole uh, really is something special that um, I'm happy and very honored to have. Um, so my name's Courtney. I graduated from PC in 2018 and I majored in economics. I minored in political science and then I also had a certificate in public administration. And now I work as a financial institution specialist for the FDIC in the Division of Depositor and Consumer Protection. So in other words, what I do is I'm working um, for a federal regulator who examines banks and um, I help ensure that consumer protection laws and regulations are being followed. Um, and as Michael said, I spend a majority of my time working in a team. Uh, we spend a lot of time discussing a lot of laws and regulations and my time at PC and in the honors program definitely helped me with that. Um, it really set me up for success, not only in my job, but also in my life as a whole. So life is more important. We'll start with that. Um, some backstory on me is that as a prospective student, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I was so undeclared that if, someone had the misfortune of asking me what I was going to major in in college. They had to then sit through maybe about five, 10 minutes of just a stream of consciousness of me saying, I don't know what I wanna do. I might like anything. I, you know, I enjoy a lot of things. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know where I see myself. Um, I just like to learn. So um, 
I was, again, lucky enough to attend PC and enter into um, the undeclared program, which I am so, so thankful for. Um, basically, when you join undeclared, you are set up with an advisor and they are there to help you kind of talk through potential courses that might help you find a major um, or even potential career paths that you might be interested in. And as an honor student, um, Dr. Fournier, who's one of the heads of the honors program, was my advisor. Um, Dr. Fournier was honestly always there for me, um, not only in helping me to decide my major, but also in a lot of my other big life decisions. So my sophomore year, that's the year that you decide if you want to go study abroad. And I was stressing, have I mentioned I'm a little undecisive? <laughs> um, I, you know, I was trying to decide, trying to talk to my parents. They're like, oh, whatever you decide, you know, you'll find the right choice. It's fine. My friends were kind of 50-50. So I really needed help. And I, I really needed an adult who, who knew me, who knew PC, and who could kind of give me some advice and guidance in making that major, major life decision. So um, I was also lucky that Dr. Fournier was one of my civ professors in my sophomore year. And I was not quite lucky that we had a seminar at Friday afternoons. So 3.30, when we finally get out, I, you know, every, we've just spent two hours talking about material. And I was like, Dr. Fournier, listen, I, I need to talk through something. Um, do you have a second? I should have said um, a few hours <laughs> because um, after that Friday afternoon seminar, we, we just talked for you know, a couple hours, I think it was maybe six before I, I finally was like, okay, I'm good now we can go. Um, but basically, you know, I was going through, I don't know if I want to miss out on a semester at PC, but I really think I should study abroad. And it's something I always saw for myself um, and just kind of trying to explain to her what I was feeling. Um, and Dr. Fournier was so great. So she sat there and she, and she listened. She heard exactly what I was saying. She took my like anxiety and worry about this decision seriously. Um, and then she helped me to see the decision for myself when she gave me the actual best advice I've ever received, which was if you find yourself trying to convince yourself of the decision after you've already made it, maybe you don't actually want to make that decision. And in that moment, everything just clicked. Um, and I still live by those words in every major decision that I make. Um, so I could go on and on about um, just the huge role that Dr. Fournier played in my life. But um, she is also representative of just all the other professors that I've met through the honors program. Um, the honors pro program professors, they really go above and beyond in helping you learn and not just, you know, memorize or regurgitate, they actually want you to, to learn. Like Michael said, they want you to apply things elsewhere. Um, one thing I loved in seminar is, you know, classes are smaller, so emphasis is really on you. And the great thing is it's on what you think. So, you know, it's your kind of on you to say, hey, I'm going to speak up and present my argument, present what I think, and, and kind of, you know, have a discussion about it. As a formerly, formerly very shy person, um, I was a little apprehensive about seminar, but it really helped me to get out of my comfort zone and gain experience and even just confidence in speaking up. Um, and then today, of course, at work, I spent most of my day participating in group discussion. And I really owe my success there in just having that safe space of seminar where I kind of found my voice and I was able to say, okay, you know what, I've done the work, I did the reading, and I've made the analysis, and, and just kind of having that, that experience, and then, you know what, I'm with, um, with my friends in seminar, I'm with professors that I trust and feel comfortable around, so it really was, um, was helpful there, and then, of course, I made lifelong, um, lifelong friends in my honors classes. I am actually living with two other uh, honors program alumni, so um, it's just really awesome to to see how the honors program has really touched all areas of my life um, and I could go on and on but now I'll turn it over to Laura to share her experience. Thanks Courtney. Um, hi I'm uh, Laura. I graduated from PC in um, 2014 um, and like Courtney I, I came in and I was undeclared. I 
yeah, I had a very like broad interest. I didn't know if I wanted to do something kind of like in the more like liberal arts communities or something in the STEM fields. Um, I was like considering like physics, music, like a pre-med track. Um, yeah, I went back and forth between a lot of different things. I ended up graduating with um, a math and humanities um, double major. So like still kept the <laughs> two sides of the brain. Um, and after I graduated from PC, I went and did my um, graduate school work at Notre Dame in mathematics. Um, I study uh, quantum field theory and algebraic topology. And then, um, yeah, I graduated with my PhD from Notre Dame last May. And I was like so thrilled to be able to return to PC um, as an assistant professor in the math department. So that's yeah, where I am um, now. Um, yeah, so I just wanna think back about my experience at PC and um, my experience in the honors program in particular. And like the word that like um, stands out to me is community. So like a couple aspects of like the community in the honors program. Um, the first aspect is the like community with your fellow students. Um, so yeah, maybe some of the people who are, um, I don't know, kind of like sitting next to you uh, virtually in the, the Zoom room um, could be like, yeah, potential future classmates for these really informative, um, or, you know, really formative, uh, like, yeah, honors courses. Um, so especially in like the first two years when you're taking those civ classes, um, and you're typically like with the same group of students for a whole year, um, you really get to know each other as you're um, kind of grappling with these great historic texts. Um, you're coming at get these um, you know, kind of monumental questions from all different perspectives, from all different majors. Um, and it's a really special experience to kind of go through um, that process, um, get to know each other kind of like through discussing these great works, um, through kind of disagreeing with the text, through disagreeing with each other, and like learning how to have um, that like authentic dialogue in the context of a community, um, which I think is something like really special and just really um, like unique and like needed in our kind of current society. Um, I think part of like where that community and where that ability to have that type of dialogue with these other students comes from is um, from the professors. Um, so that's like, I guess, another aspect of the community. Um, so one thing that's unique about the Providence um, like honor civ programs, I guess the civ program in general, is that those classes are team taught um, by a group of professors, um, I guess, like, I think usually two to three from different disciplines. So like among the professors themselves, you see how they are coming at these questions from different perspectives, the different perspectives of their particular disciplines. Um, I mean, yeah, they like disagree with each other on certain, um, different things, but they obviously like are like, very clearly like respected each other as colleagues. And so they kind of like modeled um, like themselves, like for us students, kind of this um, ability to have a dialogue, have a respectful dialogue with people who are coming from different perspectives. Um, and you don't necessarily agree with on everything, but you can still like respect them and listen to them and kind of move towards the truth in discussion with them. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was like a really special um, thing to be able to like witness what the professors having and then kind of practice and uh, get to try to work out in your own um, seminar discussions with your fellow students. Um, another really special aspect of the community at PC, um, so this I think is was true for me in general, um, but especially in the honors um, program cl classes, but in other classes as well, which is the personal relationship with the professors. So the class sizes are generally pretty small, like especially in the honors program, they're pretty small class um, numbers. And so the professors really get to know you um, and they are like so passionate about the teaching that they do. And um, they're really, like um, Courtney was saying with Dr. Fournier, they're really um, invested in you personally and um, kind of like will go above and beyond to kind of know who you are, what your passions are and like how they can help you um, succeed in those, um, in those dreams. Um, I still have one of my um, civ professors will still send me like annual Christmas cards. Um, he was a history professor. So they like, include like an essay where he goes through like the history of like various Christmas carols. Um, but yeah, I think it's just like such a special experience to have someone who like I first met as a mentor, as an as a professor and over the course of my time at um, PC and like life afterwards has become almost like a friend. Um, and I think that really speaks to how much the professors at PC um, care about their students. Um, so yeah, kind of transitioning to some ways that the honors program affected me in life after PC. Um, one of those is like related to how invested the professors are in like in you personally. Um, so yeah, they really want to kind of, like know your goals, help you make your decision on like on your own, but kind of like yeah, be there to support you um, in discerning those decisions like um, Courtney was mentioning. So one instance I remember 
was um, I yeah, had a professors in, in the honors program who knew I was interested in grad school. Um, I guess going to the uh, yeah indecisive liking both STEM and like humanities things. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to grad school in like math or philosophy. So I was applying to come kind of, get yeah, both grad programs. And um, this professor was yeah, grading one of the essays that I had um, and he yeah, called me aside after class. I was like, okay, this like for a college essay, like maybe this would be like an A, an A minus, like it's a fine college essay. But if you want to go to grad school in like a writing heavy discipline, like in philosophy, um, you really need to like step it up. And like, these are some ways that you can like um, kind of take your writing up to the next level. I think that just showed like an, um, like an extra level of commitment to developing my like intellectual life. Like it would be so much easier just to say like, oh yeah, this is like compared to like a college rubric. This is what I give the grade, like move along. But to like have to have taken the time to like know what my goals were and to take the time to think about how he could best prepare me to meet, meet those goals, even if it was like above and beyond what the college class itself required, um, was yeah, really meaningful. And I really appreciated that um, extra commitment to helping me meet my, meet my goals. Um, and then, yeah, the last thing that I think, or that, that I'll say, yeah, one of the main things that I kind of took away from my time at PC, um, and especially in the honors program, is like a love of learning from um, a wide variety of different disciplines. So I'm a math professor, professor, I like teach math, I read math, but um, that's like by no means like the only interest that I have. Um, and I think in the honors program where you are exposed to a bunch of different courses um, in different subjects, um, I mean, like both in this um, in the SIF program where you kind of see this integrated historical um, like narrative of, kind of like where our culture comes from, um, but also in the um, like honors colloquium and extra other honors classes you take as part of the honors program, um, like you get to experience these uh, yeah these different um, courses with people who are passionate about that subject and about teaching um, in a field that's different from your major, and um, I really appreciated that the ability to kind of pursue excellence in my particular like STEM field, but then also be exposed to like very rigorous and challenging classes like outside of a STEM field, and um, I think this goes to like the, the Dominican, um, uh, I guess, teaching philosophy of Providence College. Like the, the one of the mottos is very toss. And like, you'll see this like on the, um, like on the logo, like on Slavin, like the, the torch. Um, and yeah, I think that's something that's kind of runs throughout all of the Providence curriculum is that we're pursuing truth, we're pursuing veritas from all these different perspectives. And so we um, really believe that it's all um, integrated, it's all kind of united, even as you're pursuing it and pursuing kind of it in a very like high challenging specialized um, like vision in the different disciplines, they're still integrated all together. Um, and I think that balance of um, expertise and like the breadth of knowledge um, is something that, yeah, I'll take with me um, for the rest of my life. And I'm like extraordinarily grateful that Providence laid that foundation. Okay, I'll turn it over to Matthew now. Everyone, thank you so much for uh, for having me here. I in in hearing everyone else talk, I'm sort of having these like truly genuine joyful smiles come across my face as I get nostalgic remembering my experience in the PC. And I I think it, hearing you guys talk, it, it's like such a universal truth the kind of connection that people have with PC over the years. So it's it's kind of refreshing to come back to that after you know a, a few years years away from campus. Um, so thanks again for being here. Thanks again for having me. My name is Matt Santos. I'm uh, from the class of 2014. Um, upon graduation, uh, I went to uh, the Warren Alpert School of Medicine at Brown University um, for my medical degree, and I'm now currently a third year uh, ophthalmology resident um, at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. Um, so I lived my entire life in Rhode Island um, before going to PC. So I grew up there. My dad went to PC. Um, I had spent my entire life in that tiny little 15 minutes around Rhode Island, which is not uncommon for many people. Um, which, if you asked me eight years ago, would I be living in St. Louis? I did not think that that was going to be the case, although it's treated me quite well. Um, and so when I was applying to colleges, I was thinking of, you know, wanting to spread my roots a little bit outside of the small window of Rhode Island. And um, what ended up being like the final sort of deciding factor for me to stay in the honors program PC was the very generous package and financial aid that I'm sure many of us and many of you may have sort of uh, heard from the admissions office about. And 
I remember feeling at first, you know, am I going to look back and think, you know, should I have left the 15 minutes in Rhode Island and not sort of felt in what was comfortable and close uh, and also financially stable? And each and every day, and as the years goes by, I think and find new ways in which PC had enriched me as a person, as a learner, and a student. Um, and I'm still surprised, you know, more and more in ways that it's sort of impacted me now in my time as a doctor. Um, I, th I think we, we've already talked a lot about the ways in which CIV and the program sort of affects your ability to communicate well, whether that's public speaking or whether that's writing. Um, I think for me too, it helped me learn how to listen in a really big way. Um, because I think going into college and, and in high school, my, uh, my default was extroversion sort of at, at first. And so having uh, things that I wanted to share and thinking that my ideas were, were smart ones and so that I should share them with people. Um, but so much of some seminar and those small classes where you're in a group of eight people is not just speaking first, but listening first. Um, and I think that that's really impacted in a lot of the things that I do in medicine too, because sometimes, you know, your impetus is don't just stand there, do something, um, which, you know, in certain circumstances where life or in my circumstance vision is at stake, yeah, you should do that. Um, but in a lot of different ways, sometimes people need you to not just do something, but stand there um, and be there for them and listen to them. Um, and I think that that was enriched in PC in a lot of different ways. Um, in looking back at old papers, because I have them all saved on my computer still, I had my freshman year and my sophomore year and my junior year all very organized. And I sort of was flipping back through for a little nostalgia stick to see through it. And so like, I, like Michael was saying, I, you know, I wrote 20 reflections in Civ, one to two page reflections. And I also wrote for the cow for four years. So I had like 15 articles saved and like five, five page papers. And I look back and like, who is the person who is able to do all of these things? It's amazing, like what you're able to accomplish. Um, and, you know, I look back and read it and, I, and, and I've read a couple of them and sort of, you know, preparing for this. And it's sort of funny to think of the things that they got a 19 year old kid thinking about, you know, uh, and, and the things that you talked about with, with friends of yours in these classes. And, um, you know, in going through four years of medical school and now in residency where it's very specialized scientific learning. And, and I have learned so, so much in these last seven years about a very specialized field. It does make me a little extra nostalgia about this time where you're learning about things that are larger than, than what you're doing in the day to day um, and sort of have implications that again, you might not see each and every day, but come back to you um, as you go along. So I think a lot of people have, have offered some anecdotes too about their familial connection with PC. So I, uh, I was on the, uh, was a member of the Friars Club for four years. And so I gave tours for four years. I served as the president my senior year too. Um, and so I had ample opportunity to share the many, many anecdotes about how much I loved PC and, and, and what uh, a home like connection I, I had and do still do have with the, with the place. Um, and I'll share a couple that I always, used to always share when I gave tours, you know, I, there's, some professors who used to like rove around the Slavin Center the night before exams, especially for general biology, you know, that's the largest class, one of the largest classes you would have is, you know, 70 students in a lecture hall, which again is on the smaller side if you really think about it, but um, they would come and they would see us studying in groups in the Slavin Center and they would stop and like talk to us about the different problems that were during, this is like 10 p.m. the night before, uh, night before class. And it wasn't just the Dominican friars who did happen to live on campus, but it was also Dr. Pellick who uh, does not live on campus and was sort of being there to, uh, to take time to sit with students as they're studying, answer questions the night before the exam. Um, and I remember a biochemistry professor who saw a newspaper clipping of, of, of me from, from something from giving a tour to someone who was visiting campus and she cut out the newspaper clipping and like gave it to me the next day in class because she wasn't sure if my mom would get that newspaper. And little did she know my mom 10 minutes down the road did indeed get that newspaper. However, she wanted to make sure I had that clipping in case my mom wanted to see it. So um, in my biochemistry class of 12 people, you know, she knew who I was and, you know, recognized being able to do that. And, uh, you know, if you talk to alumni from PC, they will, with a smile on their face, uh, recall those instances where, again, it makes you feel good in the moment, but you think back and, and it makes you so grateful to think of all of the different building blocks um, you know, built on people who truly give all of themselves and what they're doing um, in every day um, and just make you grateful that time that you had there. So again, I think if anyone has particular questions about like how 
the honors program or liberal arts education has influenced my time and in, in now working as learning as a physician. I, th I think it's, it's made all the difference in the world because you go to school to learn the specifics of your fields if you're going into something like medicine. Um, and I'm just so grateful I had all of this enriching experience beforehand to teach me about being a good person and listening to others um, and uh, the, all the amazing and diverse people that I learned from along the way uh, to get me to this road. Thank you all so much. Awesome. Thank you, all of you, all of your experiences were amazing to hear about um, and I'm sure very, very helpful to all of our prospective students joining in. Um, I want to open it up to question and answer here. So please, those of you listening in, um, type those in. I'll start out with one because it usually takes one question to get them flowing. Um, but all of you, you know, mentioned the, the additional challenge and the additional work that the honors program asks of students. Um, a lot of times students are worried, well, am I only going to be studying? Am I only going to be doing homework when I'm on campus or can honor students still be involved with other things? So Matt, I know you just mentioned you're a tour guide or you were a tour guide, um, but how do the rest of you feel about kind of rounding out that experience beyond just the academics while also being a member of the honors program? I can start. Um, so I, I actually ended up um, my senior and junior year living with all other honors program um, students. We um, were a bunch of overachievers and um, and we were all always kind of, you know, on the go, like, you know, we'd be like, oh, bye, I'm going to a club meeting or, oh, see, I'm studying for a test. Um, but we we were always able to manage our work and also be able to do extracurriculars. Um, I had a job on campus as well as a tutor. And um, and then we also had time where we just couldn't, you know, hang out and, and all spend time um, together in in our apartment, um, like in D-Track. Um, so it was really, I think, something that in the beginning, yeah, okay, so it's college. It's going to be a little bit of a learning experience in terms of what works well for you and even just what you want to pursue. I think I started out pursuing maybe 20 clubs that didn't really work out, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's finding what, what works for you. And, um, to be honest, you're all going to, you're all in the honors program for a reason. Um, you're all hard workers and you'll be able to get your work done while also being able to experience anything that you want at PC. I think Courtney makes a great point. Um, it's not a bubble, the liberal arts honors program. I mean, even when I was there back in the day, it was, uh, I played intramural basketball. I, uh, I had a job like you did Courtney on campus to help pay for tuition. And um, I edited the literary magazine, all, all of which took place outside of the context of the liberal arts honors program. So uh, it, it, you're not in a bubble. I mean, I also had a lot of great friends from, from outside the liberal arts honors program. So uh, it is. It, it, you're, you're not being. You're not going into a cloistered experience when you join the program. Uh, Maybe going off that. Yeah, I think. Um, so I know some college, uh, some other colleges, like have um, special like honors housing. But yeah, just as a note about like how you're not in a bubble at um, PC. Like you're. Yeah, you're not. Um, at least as like, you know, maybe you choose to live with <laughs> other honors students who become fr uh, friends, but like you're not like as um, freshmen, like all put in housing together. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, that makes it so that you are very, um, or yeah, some of my closest friends are, were also like not in the honors program. And I think you like, yeah, you definitely develop friendships from people who are from like all different backgrounds, um, all different majors and everything um, for like extra. And yeah, I always felt like I had time to pursue um, like, yeah, a decent number of extracurricular things that are not enough to um, keep my life feeling balanced. I yeah, was also a tutor. I um, also um, was in the orchestra and I took like extra music lessons on the side. So, yeah, I think you, there was definitely time to pursue um, some of like the extra passions that you had. Um, and um, yeah, I never felt like the honors program was like an impressive amount of work where it was like shutting me off from some of those other aspects of um, who I was. Yeah, my, my wife was not in the liberal arts on this program, but I still met her, so. Awesome, thank you for that input. 
Um, I'm going to give it a minute for people to, to submit their questions because we want this to be the most useful to our audience, especially in this non-traditional year of having to make a college decision. So we'll see if any others come in. And we have one. Oh, this is a great question. So um, have any of you gone on the honors trips? And so for those who are tuning in and are not sure exactly what that means, the honors trips, the liberal arts honors program does offer spring break opportunities to travel abroad alongside other classmates and professors. They go all over the world, um, most commonly different locations throughout Europe. And um, it's not a requirement of the program, but it's an opportunity that students can take advantage of every spring break. So have any of you taken or had any of you taken advantage of those opportunities? Yes, I would be very happy to talk about that. So, uh, and thank you to whoever submitted that question because again, I've, I've filled my brain so much with eyeball knowledge over the past several years that how could I forget my trip to, to Barcelona? So, um, so I, uh, you know, I, I was a double major in college. I was in biology and in English. And so that kind of constrained the amount of time that I could do classes outside of my majors and the core requirements. And so I didn't have the opportunity to do a semester abroad. Um, but my sophomore year, my spring break, I went to a week to Barcelona uh, with a bunch of my classmates and a bunch of my professors. And it was just such an amazing trip, like a really good blend of seeing historical sites and doing things with your classmates and your professors there and just enjoying the city and being able to spend a time there that's uh, with all of your friends that you've been learning with for this whole time. Um, we went and saw Roman ruins and had delicious stewed rabbits underneath the like the shadows of these like old ruins and things like that. And it was just like a, re a really, really wonderful trip and uh, grateful for that opportunity, especially not being able to study abroad. So um, they were, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, the next question that we had, what kind of extra work does the honors program entail? Oh, I, I can go with that. Um, I would say in terms of extra work, um, really the main difference compared to non-honors program, um, you're still doing civs, so you're still having kind of the same workload. Um, I will say I never had reflection pieces due. Um, we'd maybe have a quiz, but that wasn't necessarily common. So uh, maybe I lucked out, but I know a lot of my friends in other um, civ classes in the honors program um, didn't have reflection pieces always. Um, so it probably depends on the professor. But the, in terms of actual, you know, like studying or, or things you'll have to do extra, I didn't find it to be a lot more. Um, again, it really varies on the professor, but I, I think that it's something that you'll be able to handle very well. Um, because again, you are, I'm sure, a very committed and um, maybe overachieving um, individual as I was. And, um, and you find a way to manage it. And, um, I would, yeah, I would definitely say in terms of, of writing um, papers, um, that's something I always put off until the, until the last second. Don't tell any of my old professors, but um, me and my friends would get together and, you know, we just kind of write like, you know, two days before or so, and, and it always worked out well. <laughs> um, so that was something that was, we, you know, we, we turned the, the work into fun um, and even studying for exams. We had kind of our midterm and our final and um, my entire class would actually get together and do study groups. So even though, yes, there's, you know, there's some work, you're surrounded by people who are doing the same thing as you and you're not only supported, but you're also um, kind of having fun while you're doing it, uh, maybe geeking out over um, some, of the, some of the texts. So I, I always found it to be definitely manageable and fun at times, if I may admit. <laughs> I wanted to add that, yeah. Um... I think it's hard to like maybe quantify like the you know extra work because I, I don't know maybe there I don't know if there is like a page requirement for like the number of pages they have to assign for you to write or something but yeah I'm not I don't know if that's the case but yeah I don't think that's like or yeah it's like not so much like something that you can like quantify um, I feel like it's um maybe just like the level like the expectation of how um kind of like involved you as a student are going to be in the class is like maybe a little bit higher um I remember like one of the honors 
So I guess and also kind of like me answering one of the other um, questions, like um, what are the extra requirements beyond the CIV program? Um, I think you're required to take two um, other honors classes. They offer them in like, you can take like an honors ethics class, like a um, topics and science class. Like they offer them in like a wide variety um, of different um, topics. I think I took, or yeah, I took a um, literature and philosophy class. Um, and yeah, th uh, you, those honors requirements, those like two extra honors um, class requirements, those can fulfill another core requirement um, as part of just the general core um, curriculum at Providence College. Um, so yeah, uh, going back to the question of like, is it extra work? I remember for one of those um, honors classes is the um, philosophy and literature one that I took. Um, as an aspect of it, um, the professor had us write essays and then like we'd come, um, distribute it to the class and the whole class would then critique them. And I think like just like that type of involvement of like expecting like a whole class of undergrads to read another undergrad's paper and kind of offer like thoughtful, constructive criticism. Um, I think like that type of expectation is um, maybe just like a little bit like higher expectation than in some of the other classes um, in terms of like, yeah, you as a student are like very involved. You're critiquing one of your peers' papers. Your peers are critiquing one of your papers. And it's like, you're really expected to be um, like an active like um, agent or like kind of participant, like a uh, mover of the class. Um, and yeah, I think that's something that I experienced more in my honors classes than in the non-honors classes that I took. Yeah, to piggyback off of that, I also did, you know, pretty much my core requirements through the honors program, which didn't make it sort of extra work, but just sort of built into what requirements you'd be doing um, anyways. Um, and I think it allowed me to like enjoy those core requirements, maybe more than some of my peers did, because those honor classes are specialized with dedicated professors who really are, want to be there and teach honor students and people tend to be a little more engaged. So I did like an honors theology class where we sort of dissected the Nicene Creed word by word, which was really interesting. I'd said that prayer for my whole life for many, many years, but hadn't gone through it line by line and word by word to dissect all the meaning for each little word. And so like Courtney was saying, kind of geeked out over that for a, a while too, which is kind of nice. Um, and I did like a history of scientific progression class, which was like a, the philosophy of scientific progression. So it satisfied a philosophy requirement. Um, and was also very historical and talked about scientific progression, which sort of um, stimulated the biology major half of things I was doing. So um, a lot of interesting ways where it's a different kind of work, satisfying similar requirements um, and can make it you know, much more enjoyable experience, I think. Yeah, oh, and, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, Courtney. So I was just going to add for my um, kind of honors course that I took in addition to um, to CIV, and then there's also a colloquium that you can take. Um, but for me, I took my honors course in my second semester of freshman year, and that was the course that actually ended up um, helping me pick my major. So I took a, um, a macroeconomics course, and it was taught through kind of the honors program from um, a professor who became my advisor after that. So again, that um, just that help of the honors professors who are so embedded in um, in what you do and invested in you as a person. Um, and then that in professor who had taught the class ended up being the actually very instrumental in getting me um, or helping me to apply for um, an internship with the FDIC that ended up um, with me having a job my senior year of college. So I'm always so thankful for that one class had I not taken it. Um, maybe I wouldn't be where I am today, um, but I definitely, I enjoyed it. And I enjoy that you're able to fulfill your honors requirements while also fulfilling your core requirements. Yeah, I was just gonna mention as well that um... Honors courses, as they take a deeper dive into different subject areas and, and do re require a bit more out of students, they also allow students to have a bit of a GPA boost. So uh, whatever grade you might earn in an honors class, you're going to add 0.17 to your GPA for that course. So if you get a 3.0, it's actually going to be a 3.17 because it's at the honors level. Um, and, and just to kind of answer that question as well, what are the requirements? Um, Laura said it perfectly. It's that CIV class plus at least two more honors classes, though students do have the opportunity to take more. Um, and in order to stay a member of the program, there is a GPA requirement of a 3.25 is what it is currently. Um, and 
it's extremely, extremely rare that a student who is in that honors program wouldn't meet that GPA. Um, and our professors are very willing to work with students to ensure kind of their success as well. Um, but those are the requirements to graduate with that degree at the honors level. Also, um, uh, yeah, go ahead, to, Michael. I just want to make the point that um, in terms of the workload, uh, I'm, I'm happen to be on the President's Council at Providence College. So I, I'm, I have the opportunity to see the average SAT scores of the incoming class. So let me assure every one of you folks out there that you're smarter than I am and I did it. So all I can say is you can do it. Don't be concerned. You can do it. Yeah, and, and I totally echo that as the one who gets to select you all. And, and I know Courtney mentioned this too, is we selected you because we know that you can do the work um, from standardized test scores to your work that you've done in the classroom throughout your four years of high school. We split hairs over who's gonna be in this program and, and you made the cut. So we are confident that you, you can take on that extra challenge. Um, but I don't see any other questions coming through. So I want to end this by thanking you all for your time. We got one more comment that is also saying that this was extremely helpful. Um, and I want to let our attendees know that if you have any other questions that you've thought of after the fact, feel free to reach out to me in the admissions office and I can connect you with any of our alumni or even connect you with some of our current students as well. So I'm going to type my email address into the chat. Um, and I wish you all luck as we get closer to that May 1st deadline. And we hope that you are all future Friars. <laughs> Go Friars. Yes. Good luck. Yes, good luck. Go Friars. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone. Bye. Bye.